six, Robert Woodward. Number T, Greg Tayama from Adelaide. Number A, Stephen Gall from the St George's Motorcycle Club in Sydney, New South Wales. Number 51 there, Peter Cooper. Number 182, Johnny McCarthy from Mandra. Number zero, Neville Cutts. Number four, Brad Thompson from Collie. Number 57 there is Clinton Jakovic. 479 in the back row there. So there are the riders now in the hands of the starter, Richard Dixon. And we'll be getting ourselves the start in this event number 14, the first leg of the King of the Cross over eight laps. Off and racing now, and the first one to jump out was number H. Trevor Williams from Victoria. Woo! He's going for it. He got himself a slingshot. Oh, look at this end of the first turn. Three cheers for four great riders. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. The King of the Cross event will go down in history as one of the greatest ever motocross events in Australia. The event was held annually in the 1970s to 1980s, 370 kilometres east of Perth in Western Australia. The tiny town of Southern Cross only had a population of around 900 people during that period. And on one weekend in August each year, this figure would reach up to 5,000. The King of the Cross became an annual pilgrimage for motorcycling enthusiasts with thousands of riders and spectators converging on the remote gold mining site. But what made this event so unique was that the top riders would compete for big prize money and a bar of gold, which in some years was valued at up to $3,000, around $10,000 in today's gold prices. And in 1983, the bar was manufactured from gold nuggets actually recovered from the track surface, with the winner Vaughan Style from New South Wales creating history to win the event. Over the years, the total prize money continued to increase and it reached $10,000 in the mid-80s. The Southern Cross Motorcycle Club formed in the early 1970s, with the club now approaching its 50th anniversary. Western Australian motocross legend Richie Kings lived in Southern Cross, and together with another local, Bob Cousins, they decided to build the circuit. As the land was leased by the Fraser's Gold Mining Company, which was held by Eric Carnicelli, they named the motocross circuit Carnicelli Park. Richie looked after the circuit, Cousins became the event manager, and with support from motorcycle dealer the late Clem Nunn, they orchestrated the staging of the first King of the Cross in August 1975. When we decided to build that, when King and I decided, well, we'd better set up a motorbike club here. So we cranked up a few blokes and then we're gonna make it a bit of a circuit. So how that come about, King went for a ride the motorbike and up here down there and that was it we decided that's how we're gonna the circuit to be from the beginning the club had a vision of establishing an event of national significance an event that would draw nationwide attention to western australia and in particular southern cross you got to do things to bring people into a little town you know and uh to, to do what we did, you know, I'm not saying it was an easy task, but 
it brought money to town, it brought people to town, it brought kudos to town and it gave something back into the sport. To achieve this, they put up big prize money and funded the travel costs for the nation's top motocross riders through sponsorship. And the formula worked, with the event becoming much bigger each year. Because the club only had around 30 members, the King of the Cross became a true community event with support from the Kalgoorlie Motorcycle Club, motorcycling officials, sponsors and the media. The first four years were dominated by local heroes Richie Kings and three times winner Graham Smythe. But from then onwards, the nation's professional factory riders took out the remaining King of the Cross events, including Anthony Gunter, Stephen Gall, Jeff Leesk and other Australian champions. Because the event had the name King in the title, the club was meant to get approval from the British royal family. Bob said he ignored this and was never sent to the gallows or confined in solitary in the Tower of London. To coincide with Western Australia's 150-year anniversary in 1979, the Southern Cross Motorcycle Club went all out and made the event an international. The AJS Motorcycle Club was the first club in Western Australia to host international motocross in the early 70s at the famous Hernhill Circuit near Perth. So one of the regular visitors, Jimmy Aird from Scotland, was brought over to celebrate Way 79. Aird was a five-time Scottish champion and represented his country in the 1973 Motocross de Nations in Switzerland. Aird was riding for CCM, the CCM factory. Uh, and Clem was, uh, was aided for CCM's pay. He was easy to convince, I tell you, he was all born to his pay. Lester Rowley supplied the CCM for Lester Rowley had the, the factory, who had the, uh, the motorbike dealership in South Australia. Ed was joined by two famous American riders who made Australia home in the 1980s, Marty Motes and Jimmy Ellis. Marty received world recognition in 1980 when he won the 500cc USA Grand Prix at Carlsbad in California. He was a privateer at the time and beat the world's top factory riders. And Jimmy was no slouch either. He was one of the USA's top supercross riders. He won the King of the Cross in 1986 and won several Australian championships. In the beginning, the King of the Cross was run over 20 laps, like in the old days of scrambling, with the race taking around 40 minutes to complete. From 1979 onwards, the format reflected the modern Mr Motocross series, four legs over eight laps, with the rider scoring the most points deemed the winner. Because it, it just worked out better, it was better for the, 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 the spectators because get, you get four lots of starts, four lots of finishes keeps the crowd on their toes. A similar format followed for the sidecars and juniors, but these classes were run over three five-lap races. Initially we used to run them on the Sunday, like a bit beforehand, but it got too much, so we put them in the, the, on the Saturday as a separate event. And uh, there were some champions come out of that. Every year the racing was exciting on the spectacular Southern Cross circuit. And the event became the Bathurst for motocross, with thousands making the annual pilgrimage to Southern Cross and camping at the tracks, as there was limited accommodation nearby. But the riders were vying for King of the Cross instead of the King of the Mountain. When Bob Cousins stepped down from the event in the mid-80s, he reflected back on the event's history and these were his fondest memories. The local riders and motocross champions Richie Kings and Graeme Smythe dominated the early years, with Graeme Smythe from Kalgoorlie winning the inaugural event in 1975. Kings led the 1976 event for almost the entire 20-lap race, but he handed the victory to Alan McCarthy when he pulled out with engine failure with just two laps remaining. When accepting the trophy, McCarthy paid tribute to Kings, who he felt was more deserving of the victory. Graham Smythe won the next two years, upstaging the Eastern States contingent in 1978, when they competed in the event for the first time. 
An Australian champion in his own right, Smythe won the gruelling 20-lap event ahead of the nation's top riders Anthony Gunter, Stephen Gall and Trevor Flood. That year, Swedish rider Pelle Granquist, who was living in Australia, became a crowd hero, finishing the last 11 laps on a flat back tyre. In 1979, reigning Mr Motocross champion Anthony Gunter won the event. That was the year the event became international during the state's 150-year anniversary celebrations. It was also incident-packed. In the second leg, local rider Graham Smythe passed Gunter on the chequered flag to be awarded the race by a metre. Then in the third leg, Smythe was leading Scottish rider Jim Aird until the pair collided mid-air on a jump at the slide dump section when Aird tried to pass Smythe on the inside lane. Both riders fell, which led to a heated exchange in the pits after the race. Smythe cut his leg badly and had to go to hospital after the final leg, while Aird was unable to ride in the final due to a broken throttle cable. That mid-air collision was captured on film and featured on the cover of the 1982 King of the Cross program cover. In 1980, it was Stephen Gall's turn to take home the gold bar. He was the fastest rider that year and was leading the points after two races. But in the third race, Gall got a flat tyre and it looked like his title chances were gone, particularly in the final leg when both Neville Cutts and Anthony Gunter were ahead of him. But race leader Cutts got a flat tyre in the final leg too. Then it looked like Gunter would win, but he broke a gearbox with a half a lap to go. With both Cutts and Gunter unable to finish, Gore went on to win the final race and his total points were enough to secure victory by the narrowest of margins. 1981 saw the dominance of the big 500cc Kawasaki's with Victorians Anthony Gunter and Trevor Williams finishing first and second respectively. This time it was Gore's turn for disappointment, twice crashing heavily while landing. Fortunately, only his pride was hurt as both spills were on the main straight, right in front of the big crowd. The King of the Cross saw the emergence of runner-up World 500cc champion Western Australia's own Jeff Leesk. In his second attempt in the seniors, Leesk won the 1982 King of the Cross. That year saw a horrific accident on the main straight when an out-of-control rider crashed at full speed into race starter Lou Fanchi from Kalgoorlie. Fortunately, Lou recovered after breaking his leg in two places and receiving lacerations to his head. The following year, the club built a raised platform to ensure the safety of the race starter. Leesk competed regularly at the King of the Cross, winning again in 1985 before he headed overseas to compete internationally. As a junior, he also won the Kid of the Cross many times in the late 70s, except on one occasion in 1980 when local Perth rider Harry Bankin was a surprise winner. New South Wales rider Vaughan Style picked the best years to win, winning back-to-back -back King of the Cross titles in 1983 and 84. These were the years that the winning gold bar was actually mined from the circuit. In the late 80s, we saw a changing of the guard. With the likes of Anthony Gunter and Stephen Gall forced to retire with injuries, we saw the emergence of new Australian champions who all went on to win the King of the Cross. Jimmy Ellis from the USA, Craig Dack, Glenn Bell and Eddie Warren also from the USA. Sidecar racing was always fast and furious on the hard Southern Cross circuit. In the 1980s, we saw many national sidecar teams compete, as well as two internationals. Max Hills and Irvine Oliver won the inaugural event in 1979 on a four-stroke Triumph Wasp. The Wasp chassis won the next two years, with the Van der Linden brothers winning the King of the Cross in 1980 with a Norton engine. Then Joe Grasso, Peter Williams won in 1981 on their Norton Wasp. The following year, Smoking Joe had engine problems. With previous winners Hills Oliver and the Fander Lindens crashing, we saw a new team emerge, Mick Wimmer and John Stangers, to win the Sidecar King of the Cross. And your gold medal for the 
Then came the domination of the 998cc Yamaha EMLs, with Grasso Williams and Wimmer Stangers finishing first and second respectively the following year, and Swiss rider Emil Bollholder winning in 1984. Bollholder was the reigning world sidecar cross champion and he tore down under with South Australian passenger Russell Ellis. In 1985, runner-up world champions Joseph Brockhausen and Hubert Rebelet competed at the same event. But unfortunately, the Germans' engine did not arrive in time for the first race of their Australian tour. To their credit, the pair still competed on an old borrowed machine, which was not competitive. The chair was on the left-hand side, the opposite to what they were used to. They crashed in the first race, but were uninjured and continued. When their new Honda VMC sidecar arrived the following week, Brockhausen and Rebele convincingly won the Western Classic at Rockingham. Joe Grasso and Peter Williams won the sidecar King of the Cross that year for the third time, riding the Yamaha EML machine they purchased from world champion Emil Bollholder. From 1986 onwards, we saw the introduction of the new lightweight sidecars with two strokes winning all the remaining sidecar King of the Cross events. Newly crowned Australian champions Darren Williams and Mark Kendall from South Australia won in 1986. John Robinson and Simon Chapman, also from South Australia, won in 1988, with John going on to win seven Australian national championships. And Cliff Cook and John Stangers won the event twice after returning from racing in Europe, winning in 1987 and 1989 after finishing second to Robinson the year before. Many riders crashed and were injured over the years at the hard, fast Southern Cross circuit. And on occasions when it rained or the track was watered too heavily to keep the dust down, the surface turned into a skating rink. Even champion Jeff Leesk stacked it in 1980. That year was incident packed with many accidents, but the most serious came in the final sidecar race. With points close, the racing was furious. The van der Linden brothers got the start in the final race and their main challenger was Joe Grasso and Peter Williams. Grasso and Williams got a bad start and were charging through the field, but rolled their outfit multiple times at the end of the main straight. Joe was flown to Royal Perth Hospital with a head injury, but discharged himself the next day and was okay. The following year in 1981, spectators witnessed a horrifying crash in the juniors. 16-year-old Craig Parsons was competing in his second senior motocross event at the Southern Cross Circuit. We only had one serious accident here that, that sort of shook me a bit. Came off the slime dump on the, the northern side, a bit quick and got airborne. And he hit, when he hit the deck down the bottom, he compressed his spine, he finished up in a bloody wheelchair. Um, yeah, nice young bloke. It was just sad, you know, because I tell you, there's always the element of somebody getting injured. Normally, you could get up more away. In 1983, spectators witnessed a sickening crash on the main straight and the sidecars. Rev's Motorcycle Magazine described this accident as the worst ever motocross crash in Australia. With brother Dean out with a broken leg sustained playing football, Wayne van der Linden and his fill-in passenger Stephen Marshall flipped their Norton Wasp outfit multiple times, landing awkwardly off the jump on the main straight. Wayne broke several ribs and punctured his lung and Stephen injured his back and a finger. But both made a quick recovery, and Wayne was back racing in a few weeks. Race organiser and club secretary Bob Cousins was the man behind the success of the King of the Cross. The owner of the railway tavern in Southern Cross and his family and supporters put in tireless efforts and hours over the years. 
He was nicknamed Reverend Cousins by track commentator Con Migro, which stuck. On race days, Bob would dress in a different costume, including on one occasion an Arab headdress. He said that he did this to make a point to the riders to take care and that he was the only clown in attendance. At the riders' meeting before the racing started, Bob would say, when the flag drops, the bullshit stops. At its peak in the 1980s, Southern Cross Motorcycle Club only had around 30 members, but Cousins turned the King of the Cross into a community event and drew support from members, his family, other clubs, officials, sponsors and the media. When the event finished, like it went on the Sunday night, when the, uh, we ran the keg on the, the normal piss up output, we would begin planning next year, that very night. Bob would come up with the ideas, then others would implement these. The starting gate system is a classic example of this. From the first King of the Cross in 1973, the flag method was used to start each race. But to ensure starts were fairer and better controlled, Bob surveyed all the major events across Australia and planned to introduce a steel drop forward and facing down gate. He only had to mention this to club president Richard Dixon, who went away and manufactured a set of gates in the Marvel Lock Goldmine workshops to the exact specifications that Bob gave him. Electric remote activating controls were also installed and the starter Lou Fanchi could control the gate drop without drivers seeing him press the button. It was a system that worked faultlessly for the duration of the King of the Cross event. When Cousins stepped down from his official positions with the club in the mid-80s, the event slowly but noticeably declined until the King of the Cross during that era ended in 1989. Looking back, the Southern Cross Motorcycle Club achieved its goal of creating a national motocross event of significance. For 15 years, the club annually staged one of the biggest motocross events in the nation. According to Australian legend Mr Motocross and five times national champion Stephen Gall, the King of the Cross was one of the nation's best events. The King of the Cross Party Day, ladies and gentlemen, let's get for Stephen Gall! Yeah! Congratulations. I don't know how you're doing. Every time you got on that bike, you're way up there in front and going all day. And 150 miles of grueling stuff what you went through, you certainly deserve. Well done. Well, there's a lot of people I'd like to thank, especially Southern Cross Club and Bob Cousins and everyone else for their tireless effort. They put in every year for this meeting, I think. I honestly think that this is one of the best meetings all year that we go to. We travel to a lot of meetings here, there and everywhere and this is a really good one. The King of the Cross was one of the biggest events on the national motocross calendar in the 1970s and 80s. During that time, more than 30 international and national riders competed, all vying to be the king and win that gold bar, a special prize that made the event unique. Local Western Australian rider Graham Smythe won the King of the Cross three times, with Jeff Leesk, Anthony Gunter and Vaughan Style winning the prestigious event twice.
Only two sidecar teams won the event more than once. Joe Grasso, Peter Williams won three sidecar King of the Cross titles and Cliff Cook, John Stanches won two.